welcome to another ESI training video. Uh, today we're going to look at the GX, the Fisher GX control valve and how, how to do a quick and easy trim change. By the trim I mean the plug and stem and the seat arrangement also with the packing. Uh, before we start again uh, you need to download the IOM manual from the ESI Technologies website uh, I would advise you to follow all the precautions and the safety instructions and um, you can also do this job in line if you have suitable space and it's safe to do so and you follow all the isolation procedures making sure there's no pressure in the system before you uh, before you start. Now I have a picture here of a cutaway valve just to explain exactly what we're going to do is this valve is fairly closed so there is pressure on the seat and uh, and the plug so we need to remove that pressure so we're going to energize the positioner and we're going to put on an air supply and we're going to crack the valve open a small bit to take the pressure off this you don't want to be loosening your bonnet bolts and having the valve rocking back and forward as you're loosening the bolts possibly damaging the seat here um, if you're just doing it for an inspection, you don't want to make things worse. Um, before we go, uh, you're also going to need a special tool to extract the seat. Uh, you'll find the dimensions for making that tool on page 21 of your IOM. You'll also find in the IOM all the torque figures that you need for tightening all the, the bolts and nuts and for tightening the packing arrangement as well. So. We make a start there now. Try opening our valve a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the valve around the back section. As you can see, we're going to loosen our stem lock nut here, our packing nut, and the four bolts here. Now that we have the pressure off our seat, so stem lock nut. Four bolts. Okay, that's our four bolts removed, our four nuts removed, our packing uh, bolt or a packing nut uh, loosened and our stem nut loosened. So the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to lift the, the, the body assembly or the, the actuator valve assembly off the body. So, next thing we can do is we can turn off our power to our positioner and switch off our air supply. And that will extend our valve up to the closed position. Okay. Now the next thing we need to do is to measure the distance from the back of the plug to the landing surface for the gasket here on the valve so that we when we put back the new one or, or, or put back the old one replace the new one we have it in the exact same position so we measure that and it comes up at 46 millimeters so we just take note of that once we have that done we can unscrew the stem the stem connector and the lock nut. Okay, put the whole lot out here. So we just remove our stem from our packing inside in this uh, bonnet. We have our packing kit, an Enviroseal packing kit. You can buy the complete kit, which will come with two cup washers, uh, these cup washers have a gap in the center when you put them in, in, in the correct way the cups should be facing each other so that when this guy is screwed down it compresses these which puts a live loading on your chevron type packing uh, to keep the pressure on it even through the wear so you have a cam follower or a, a 
a packing follower and inside here is your packing kit i'm not going to remove this now because i don't want to damage it taking it out but if you have a kit inside in the kit you will have a drawing with the packing arrangement all the, all the parts and the instruction on how to change it out so it's quite straightforward so assuming we've changed these bits and pieces we put our cup washers back in correctly our packing follower and then we screw those back up and just tighten it up hand tight place our stem back in back up hand tight put our lock nut onto our stem everything back together. Check our travel. Make sure it's the same as where we left, where we took it off. Have a look at it. Tighten our lock nut. Make sure our stem doesn't go anywhere. Now we move to the body. In the valve body we have our seat which is screwed in. Now you need um, the special tool as I mentioned previously. Here's one for this particular size and model. We put that in. Will be quite tight. This one's a bit loose now because I loosened it already. Save the time. Unscrew our seat. And here's our seat. So you can fit a new replacement in this case. This one's okay, and because it's on a demo model, we won't be replacing it. But uh, when you remove it, it's always better to check, make sure your treads are intact, and the seating area around here where, the valve, where, where this sits down is uh, clean. Especially if it's on steam, you can get some tracking up the inside here that damages the treads. And uh, you can get some passing on your valve, not through the seat, but up through the side of it. So that's important to us, so I'm just going to stick this one back in. Now, we've replaced the seat, replaced the stem, new packing in, cleaner gasket surfaces and fit a new bonnet gasket as well and we put back on our air and we drive our power up close the valve or should i say open the valve we don't want it rocking in the seat when we place it back on the body replace our four balls them in a crisscross fashion. Again, remember I can talk them to the correct figures, which you'll find on the IOM. So now we can close our valve. So, uh, tighten up our bolts. Tighten up our lock nut. Tighten up the packing box. Again, you'll find uh, the the packing arrangement uh, torques 
on the uh, IOM. Now that we've all that complete, the next thing to do is a calibration. Relatively straightforward, so I'm just going to remove the cover here. Press once and it says quick setup, enter. This arrow here, you press that for three seconds until it disappears from the screen. And you're going through a smart calibration. It goes from zero to 100%, back to 50%. It self-tunes at 50%, goes to zero, and then it will say calibration completed. If it says cal calibration failed, then there's a problem with the uh, installation. We need to take a look at that. We'll do that on another video. That's our calibration completed. As you can see, it says calibration completed on the screen. And we're back. So as you can see in the screen here, we have four milliamps and zero travel. So I'm going to jump that up at 25% intervals just to check. That's eight milliamps, 25, 25%, 12 milliamps, 50.2%, 16 milliamps, 75.4%, 20 milliamps is 99.9 .9. so that's it we're calibrated mm -hmm.